Debating is more than just arguing. Debating is a discussion of ideas between two groups. Supporting and opposing controversial and relevant ideas or issues. That are happening in today's society. With the purpose of finding the most effective and efficient solutions to those issues. My name is Sarai Rod Horheng. And I am Bang Ming. My name is Nan Kun Kim Maria. And my name is Usha Sophia Janardhan. That is me, Saptolan. We are the Young Scholars. Representing Cambodia Team 3 in the upcoming quarterfinals of the ASEAN Youth Debate 2022. My name is Nuk Meng Koo and I'm the coach for Cambodia Team 3. Over the past few months, I have seen each member progress, work hard and passion for the debate. I am certain that the competition day will be the reflective of their dedication. To watch the live stream of this debate, please follow the Facebook page of the Ministry of Education, Youth and Sport of Cambodia and ASEAN Youth Debate. And please don't forget to support King Free from Cambodia. Upon. Wow, wow, okay. Just a little video, but very powerful, attractive, and confident are the representatives of Cambodian uh, youth uh, delegate. Actually, uh, good evening, everyone. Welcome for the reflection. Yes, um, uh, good evening, Wong. Jimmy Su, Wong, and Jimmy Su, our audience. Good evening, Wong, and everyone who's watching right now. Yeah, thank you. Give me a, a second. Put the pin. Okay, so welcome for the reflection. And the reflection is we will be conducting in English. And uh, we try to engage and encourage the young people with the achievement the lies, uh, learning, and also their startup, their business, their idea that make sure those will be benefit to our society. And also expert, even though they are just uh, no more use, we still encourage all of them to share. The more we share, the more we get. Okay, so today we are so excited to welcome for the two delegate, our two speakers from the ASEAN News Debate. And uh, welcome from Wang Heng, uh, Wang Meng. Okay, to be so long yes, yes. again. Okay. Oh, introduce. Okay, my name is Wang Ming. Uh, I am twenty-two years old, and currently I am studying at uh, Cam Ed, auditing and accounting at Cam Ed. And that's that's it for me. Okay, thank you. And how about Sri Rod? Could you introduce yourself a bit? Uh to Su Bong and everyone who's watching, my name is Ray Rod, and uh, currently I'm 19 years old. Um, I'm doing a dual degree, a Bachelor of Law at the Royal University of Law and Economics and Bachelor of English at the Royal University of Phnom Penh. And I'm one of the member of Team Cambodia uh, in the ASEAN Youth Debate. Okay, so thank you. Uh, before we start, the audience, if you have any question or concern, you can drop in uh, the comment. We try our best to deal uh, your concern. So the topic for tonight is about uh, how ASEAN youth can uh, build our uh, friendship or cooperation in terms of uh, cultural linkage. Therefore, our two speakers, Sri Rod and also Wei Ming, will share all of you today. So we we'll start for the first question. So could you please tell me what do you think about the contribution of ASEAN youth to promote cultural linkage? Wei Ming, could you please share us? Okay, well, um, I have two perspectives for that. Um, one is our personal development. So for youth to 
promote cultural linkage first, we have to understand our culture first. We have to learn about our culture and be um, firm in our stance and who we are and where we're from. And also develop our, uh, our soft skill and hard skill, um, developing in, uh, languages like English and the ability to communicate well with other countries in ASEAN as well. And also live our life in a way that we have things to talk about and we have experiences that we can share with other people. Um, um, yes. Um, that's it all for me. Okay, thank you. So we have to understand our culture first, uh, understand about language, our history, and also our national spirit as well to make sure that we understand ourselves and then we can understand and build the connection with uh, ASEAN uh, member state uh, use. So how about Sri Rod, what do you think about uh, what is the role of ASEAN in terms of building the communication or connection with other ASEAN uh, candidates or delegates? Uh, hello, Wong. Thank you for the question. Um, I believe that because youth are like the future leaders of our nation and therefore our region, they're like the main stakeholders to focus on when it comes to like linking culture or accepting each other culture. So I think that um, many of us now are very open minded. Uh, I can say more open minded than the older generation uh, and that they're willing to accept the cultural differences, respect each other national identity and treat basically everyone the same way, no matter who they are or where they're from. And um, besides this, I think that youth are the catalyst to expose each of their own culture to the international stage through participating in like different events like exchange program or like short study trips, as well as competition like this ASEAN youth debate. So with more exposure of each uh, nation culture, we can learn the similarities and differences um, of each other and therefore communicate and learn better from one another as well. Um, for me personally, I believe that ASEAN youth have already contributed largely to promote cultural linkage by exposing their own culture to the world and accepting and respecting the cultures of other nations in the region as well. Wow. <laughs> Just only one question, mind? but, but really, um, uh, <laughs> you both like a, a champion, yeah. And anything uh, you add, Wing Meng? Okay, do you mind if I uh, also um, add on to some of what God said? Um, because of uh, our younger experience, youth, they are more open-minded because, for example, we, not, we did not went through the wars and trauma that our parents went through. So we did not have the scars and trauma that our parents have or the, the conflict between our past experiences. So youth are more open-minded and they're more educated and they're more open to connection between each nation. And also we perceive our nation in a way that um, we're learning from it. So we can share our perspective. This is what happened in Cambodia. This is what happened in Malaysia. And then um, as youth, we can draw a conclusion that is fair, that is educated, and that is um, very productive to move forward to a better and prosperous future. Okay, it means we can learn from each other. Okay, so uh, what do you think about one word that said that as a uh, youth is a driving force or the petrol, the engine of our nation? Do you agree uh, with this word? Um, okay, I will start again. I agree. I strongly agree with that because youth is the future, right? Um, yes, uh, because because we are we learn from the best from what we have. We our our parents cherish us and cherish um, and they offer us a good experience, the best experience that they have. So. We're also, we're, we're, we're only the better version of them. So moving forward, youth will be the future and youth will be the driving force of innovation and productive technology that is very new to older generation. For example, older generation would struggle with technology, but youth would have no problem doing it. So yes, I agree that youth is the, one of the biggest driving force in innovation and prosperous future. Okay, thank you for your agree. And how about uh, Sri Rod? Um, thank you, Wong. Uh, I think, I think, as much as we are like the power force of the society, we also can be rebellious sometimes. So we are the generation that 
um, cares about what is happening around us. We care mm -hmm. about things that uh, we do not like about, for example, um, the new uh, like old invention technology. And when we care, we try to improve it. So for example, if anything in the society that is not um, good, for example, and we, we see that that's the problem, we are the one who try to uh, focus on it and change it to an extent that we can. So I feel like to an extent, we are the power or the driving force of the society because um, we use our voice and action to actually make changes into society um, in areas that we can do so. Mm. Okay, can I add to that also, also as well? Yeah, yes, okay, okay, okay. you can. I, I strongly agree with Rob, just like how we normally do when we discuss about debate topics, we really connect and uh, have really, really a uh, similar perspective. Um, um, not also that we are offered the best from our parents, but we also learn about their mistakes, right? So we also learn about the things that they have done right and learn from it and also learn from the things that they did not do right. And we will be out there to stand in a ground that is very open-minded and accept that okay, this is the mistake that our parents did, and now we're gonna move forward to something better. Mm -hmm. Okay, so in mean like we are a part of solution is not a part of problem, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, what would you mind to telling me uh, what you have done in building the, uh, uh, building the connection and network with ASEAN youth? Um, for that, I would like to share two experience. One is a personal experience and the second one is the experience I have with ASEAN Youth Debate. The mm -hmm. first one is um, I've met a friend from Singapore. He grew up in Singapore. So he invited me for over for a trip in Singapore, like showing me all the best places that he used to go to in Singapore and the things that he liked to eat, uh, the, his favorite food. So we did have a lot of long and deep conversation during those trips. And I feel like I've learned about Singaporean in a way that I understand the things that they do right and the things that they don't quite do right and how those things can be used to improve my own self, my life, and also the things that our nation can learn from Singapore as well. Mm -hmm. And the second perspective is uh, ASEAN Youth Debate itself. Um, we get to meet with the Malaysian team after the debate, even though the debate was very intense. But after the debate, we really get to sit down and talk and share about our experience. And like I said, we talk in a way that is very open-minded, that is very transparent. Okay, we did this, this in our, in our country, this is what happened, that is what happened. I will not go into the specific this. It was very critical and very, um, very real. But um, we, we, we talk in a way that this is what happened and what is better for the future is in the middle ground where knowledge and experiences and productivity is in mind. So mm -hmm. we're, we're, we're telling each other as it is and we're moving towards to a better future. Okay, so we're moving forward for a better future. So uh, be beside just only debate. So Sri Rod, what you have done uh, with the Malaysian or Thailand or other candidates, uh, what you have made a connection with them besides just only debate? Uh, well, you wanted to ask like, Besides the competition, what, did, yeah. what else did we do? Yes. Um, I think because the Malaysian team were physically here, uh, we were able to communicate with them a lot more than other teams because um, uh, the uh, previous rounds were all held virtually. Mm -hmm. um, so besides the competition, we were able to communicate a lot with the Malaysian team, like what our main said. So... Um, I think in the afternoon after the debate, we took the Malaysian team to the Russian market because they said that it, it was because that place was one of their bucket lists when visiting Cambodia. Um, so we took them to see the souvenir shops there um, to buy souvenirs like keychain and all that um, to bring back to their family and friends back in Malaysia. And on that night, on the same day, uh, we gathered with the Malaysian team to basically mm -hmm. talk and get to know each other more. So we talk about a lot of topics, um, like May mentioned, ranging from like education system to mm -hmm. religions to culture. Um, 
and even to our majors and degrees in university. And uh, basically the similarities and differences between each country. So um, being physically with the Malaysian team throughout the course of three days was a, memor a very memorable experience for us, basically. Okay, actually the candidates from each country to compete in the ASEAN Youth Debate are very amazing and potential. So, but uh, the final is uh, the Malaysian and uh, with uh, your team. So how, uh, what do you think about the Malaysian team? Uh, the Malaysian team, I think I admire them in a way because they're doing similar things to what we're doing, but they're doing it in a way that um, it's very admirable. So one, one of the team from Malaysian team is a coach in debating. So he wow. coached full time and he's been debating for many years. Actually, mm -hmm. their team have been together for three years and some of them have been debating for more than seven years. Wow. So yes, even though we're similar age in sophomore year, second and third year of university, but um, the way they live their life and the way they lead their life and the things that they do really, uh, really inspire us to do more for ourselves and also to see their perspective and how they are living their life and chasing their dreams. Okay, uh, not just only Malaysian team, I am the one, I was the one that sit and listen and watch both Cambodian and Malaysian team during that uh, the competition final day. You are also amazing on that time. Wow, the way that you present, the way that you act is really amazing. I'm, I'm so surprised that, uh, as you know, Cambodian is, even though we're small, we are just a small country, but our youth are amazing as well, right? So one word that they said that uh, we, as the end, we don't try to compete each other, but we try to complete each other. What do you think about this word? Um, that is very true. I will start again, and then maybe Rod can also answer the question because I think she would have really great things to say about it. Um, one word I, I learned from the competition is um, unitary, uh, unity in diversity. And what I learned in university is diversity will lead to more innovation. So um, we can always share the things that we're good at in ASEAN. For example, in Cambodia, we're very good at architecture, cultural design and traditional clothes and music. And maybe other nations are good at different things. So we can come together in a way that we unite in the name of ASEAN and put the good things, like I said from before, um, we have our good side and we also have our not so good side. So coming together and discussing in a way with transparency and knowledge, we can really um, get down to um, the deep end and really look at things as it is and share our knowledge and combine our good side together and together we will be stronger. Unity and diversity. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Cool. Okay, how about Sreirot, anything to add? Uh, thank you, Bong. Um, I think I agree with what Ming said, uh, but what I want to add on is that basically everyone see debating as competing with one another or like an, a very intense competition it's that there will be. Yeah, <laughs> that there'll be like one winner and one losing team. Yeah. But for me, and others might see, some other might see this as well, but I see debating as a way to um, complete each other as well. So basically, um, in debating, you're not, no one is wrong, but we're trying to find the best solution. So if one um, issue is put, is placed on the table, you are debating on your uh, each side to present the best solution. And therefore, I think that with the government and opposing side, there will be check and balances to our case. And therefore, at the end of the day, we will get one um, best solution. And that's why I think that with debating, we're not actually competing with one another, but we're also completing each other. Okay, so I, yeah. Yeah, actually, uh, debate is we also learn about ourselves as well. What are uh, our weakness, our strength, what should we improve, and also the teamwork, and we learn from our uh, opponent as well. So debate is amazing. Uh, not about fighting and arguing. Yeah, fighting, but fighting with just only the evident best rebuttal with the evident best, not personal attack, right? Am I right? <laughs> yeah. Okay. So uh, you said that uh, we have. 
uh, the president and also the proposed and opposition team that compete uh, one topic to try to find the solution. Back to your previous final topic is about the FDI would alter uh, mentally so the problem of nutri nutrient deficiency. So this topic, what do you think like, what is the, your solution that time? Okay, I will start. Um, our solution that time was like, we do agree that foreign direct investment has its benefit uh, and have it, its effect on nutrient deficiency, but it's not a direct solution to nutrient deficiency. So on our side, we try to look into the different actors um, that contribute directly into nutrient deficiency. And we're saying that focusing on these actors and their action is more important than um, focusing on increasing foreign direct investment. And, Malay and the Malaysian team, they, they, they focus on the topic on, uh, at, from a very different, from a different perspective and saying that um, the benefit of foreign direct investment is very vast and they try to link it into the different actors that we um, mentioned as well. So it was very, uh, it was a very challenging and very competitive debate. We were neck and neck until the end. And uh, yes, that, that, that's, yeah. Okay. Are you afraid that time? Um, I was very nervous. Nervous? Indeed. Yeah. And, yeah, and, and it, was, it, it showed on stage. And there, there were mistakes that I made on stage that I wish I didn't. But it's all in the past now. I learned from it and we will grow. And maybe next time we would do better. Yes. Uh, and yes, but why, why I don't see you are nervous as an audience that time? <laughs> Why oh, I don't you, see don't, you don't see me as nervous? Okay. <laughs> yeah, you look so cool and that time, the way that you present, especially your body language, your hand, your uh, uh, your word, your pulse is really amazing. Yeah. Okay, so how about Sri uh, What do you think about that topic? Uh, FDI can solve the problems of nutrition? I think um, that topic is a very good topic for the final round long because um, as much as it, it is impacting the society right now, it's also um, very debatable on both sides. So um, as Malaysian team, they have to prove that FDI at the end of the day has to um, decrease the amount of nutrient deficiency in the society. But on our side, we look at it in a different perspective, like main set. So instead of FDI um, increasing nutrient deficiency, we only see that FDI increase the economy and increasing economy does not mean decreasing nutrient deficiency. Mm -hmm. So that is the gap that um, Team Malaysia has to prove. And I feel like at the end of the day, we both prove our solution and therefore leading to the goal at, as well. Okay, so the Malay Malaysian team in that time, they stick to the uh, FBI that can solve all the problem in terms of money, in terms of investment, in terms of infrastructure and also digital infrastructure. So that is uh, also the powerful attack and uh, they stick to the point. And uh, yes, we learn from each other. That is a good from debate. So, but uh, uh, for, for your challenge, uh, what are some more pressing challenge during uh, the debate in that time? Uh, for me, debating is always very challenging because it's stressful most of the time. It's stressful, <laughs> stressful, stressful, and then it leads to the competition and then a massive climax, massive relief at the end that is very, um, I cannot describe that feeling. I've done many great things that is many fun things, but I think debating is one of the best, gives you one of the best feelings. Um, one of the, some of the most challenging for me is uh, first, we have to develop a very wide understanding of the topic. So a lot of research, a lot of knowledge, which I also appreciate from debating. I learned so much from debating. And it's also the, the script writing, because when you're script writing, you're always thinking, oh, how can they challenge this? How can they challenge that? And then you keep changing. And, and yes, so it, it's a combination of knowledge and it's a combination of um, constructing the argument and in the end it's the ability for you to deliver the message and and give the audience what you're trying to tell them in the in the time limit of five minutes as well that is very challenging for us 
the the five minute was was definitely one of the most challenging uh, because we have so much to say and it's only five minutes so you have to fit everything into five minutes and sometimes we have to cut the spices the things that would have made the the, the debate more impactful yeah ingredients um, yeah the ingredients so it's not only the facts but it's just it, it's also like the 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 word of challenging the opponent and also like uh, what, how how their world would lead to if they were to do that and how our world would lead to but we didn't get, we didn't get to say a lot of the things we wanted to but we did try our best and fit the best thing that we could into the five minutes that we have okay so how about uh Zray Rod? anything uh, to add i think there are two challenges for me throughout this debate competition as well as um, throughout the other debate competition that I've been to. Um, so firstly, it's the um, time dedicated to debating. So we are all university students and we're all doing um, university at the same time as this competition. So it's quite challenging to find time to um, actually meet up with one another or um, you know, spend time researching or constructing our cases. And secondly, it would be um like may said the five minutes um duration that we have to fit everything in so um when we do research we get a lot of information and we construct our case with a lot of information and therefore we feel like five minutes is too limited for us to actually present everything and um like add in the ingredients like what may said as well Mo. so yep um the time dedicated into debating and the uh, very little time we have to speak yes. okay i i noticed that uh that day is the uh, the five minute for presentation of uh your speech is not a problem because you can remember i'm sure but the problem is about the q a that time after the each speaker the opponent will ask the question and just only that speaker can answer how do you feel and can you tell us about that oh um i feel like uh, my brain grew from the the POI session of that debate because it was really the exchange of um, intelligence and also the clash of intelligence as well because we're also trying we were trying to talk with facts and information and also try to think of those facts and information and the theories that we've learned in school in a very like in 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 a split second in snap. So we were all we were like going back and forth, and for me, my neurons grew so much during the POI session because there was so much information going on in my head, and uh, the things that um, we can challenge them, and then they can challenge us, and how do we defend those challenges that they challenge us with? And as you can see, um, if you were watching the debate live, me and my teammate were constantly talking and listening at the same time, and also exchanging ideas and saying, oh, this is this should be the answer and that should be the answer. So, uh, yes, the POI session was very challenging, but um, we grew a lot from it. Yeah, the, the, the question from the government side, Malaysian team is are, are really, really difficult. <laughs> yeah. So how was it? Yeah. <clears throat> um, I think um, so, like, as I said, since the beginning, I think after the preliminary round, I'm always like worried about um, the Q&A, the POI session, because it's like the most unexpected part of the debate, but debating without it would be not fun. So um, during the POI session, it was quite difficult for us because apparently we've added the like strong parts in our speech already. And then when they make us answer more questions regarding it, or like they try to attack what we are, we've already said, it it takes us back to what we say and how we actually can defend what our speech, uh, our cases in like a short period of time because um, we have to respond directly or else we will be seen as, oh, uh, maybe we do not know about our case or we, maybe we're not confident with it. So um, debating is, it's like very, you have to be very reflective when you debate because um, it's going back and forth all the time. So how can we uh, uh, flexible? I think it depends on experience and your understanding of the topic more. Um, so 
when I first started debating, I was never good at answering POI. I'm always nervous and I hate POI. Um, but then as the more you debate, the more you understand that, oh, um, the cases or like debating topics always go around in a circle. So some so different debate topics, sometimes you can use the same case to argue as well. So um, you have an idea of what is going on in the debate and also your understanding of the topic. So as long as you understand your topic, you understand your stance, you stand strong with your stand, with your what you believe in and what you're trying to prove, um, answering POI is not a problem. Okay, cool, cool. Yeah, actually, I, I, uh, uh, yeah, uh, do, mind, do you mind if I add to that? In order to be more flexible for me is what I learned from um, Steve Jobs. It sounds very nerdy, but uh, what I learned from G Steve Jobs is like painting a mental image so you can see things in your head because you have formulate a lot of like um, researching. So you formulate a mental image in your head of this is what's going on. And then you can see it in your head and you keep also, there's a lot of like talking to yourself about the topic as well. So you, you see how to navigate the topic and you see it through and through. So mm -hmm. when they talk mm -hmm. about it, you can just go, you can just look at that mental image and then see how to navigate um, that point of view. Okay, so actually POI is the one procedure of debate for them to ask the question. And the questions are very, very difficult. They try to ask our weakness. So uh, remember the script. Actually, five minutes for presentation, it just reflect what you remember and research. But POI reflect how you understand about the topic. Yeah, and the way that you interact and answer back to the uh, your opponent. So ladies and gentlemen, if you have any question, please drop in the comment. We will try our best to build it. It's okay. And move back to our topic. We have mentioned a lot and discussed a lot about the debate, but what is the role during the debate to connect with, uh, to build the friendship and to build the, the, the cultural promotes, promotion with the other ASEAN? Uh, could could uh, some of you say something about that? Uh, do you mind asking the question again, Bo? It mean like, so what do you think debate can tie or straighten the relationship between ASEAN youth? Mm. Uh, for that, I would like to reflect on my experience with the Malaysian team because the debate was very um, intense. Mm. So we, we really challenged each other. So in, in a way that we gain respect for each other. Um, um, for me, the role of debating in, in um, connecting the youth is just like any other uh, endeavor, for example, a photo competition or video competition. It's connecting like-minded people together and mm -hmm. get them, uh, get them, uh, put them in an environment that they can really exchange their perspective, exchange what they learn and how they see the world. And then also sometimes challenge each other if that is not true or that is not um, accurate or not productive. So Debating gives a platform for like-minded people to connect with each other. Okay, so even though everyone like seem to be very sensitive at time, yeah, very aggressive. Uh, for for some part, it's not all, yeah. Uh, so in the education area or the technology era, so what do you see the common challenges of our Cambodian youth? Mm. Um, for um for that there there are a few challenges one is language problem mm -hmm. um, it's it's the fact that we learn from our researching is that in our country cambodia people in the rural area have very limited access to english education and also very limited access to technology as well so without experiences with those things uh, for example myself i went i went to um a, an international school uh, at the age of nine where people speak English on the daily. So I gain my, I gain access to the English language at a very young age. And I also um, had access to technology when I was 12 and gain access to YouTube as well. So, mm -hmm. so what I would say is in, in our country, we should promote um, the education system and give access to more people in the rural area 
um, young kids in Ratanakiri or young kids in uh, Mondokiri so they can, can have access to English language and also have access to technology. Then I feel like kids, they would be very smart, very reflective if we give them to the right uh, access to the right things. They would learn very fast. Kids can go to YouTube and watch many different things and learn because mm -hmm. that's, that's how I learned. Um, starting at the age of 13 or so, I started watching YouTube and just singing Eminem at a young age, just, just some fun thing, but, but it really improved my English and, and slowly integrate me into um, English, international communication, and also um, technology, the use of technology as well. Okay, okay. So you read about like the technology and also the English uh, language that they still are uh, the barrier for uh, some kids or use in the rural area, right? Yes. So how about yeah. Sri Rod? <clears throat> um, I agree with May Bong because um, I feel like when we do research and all that for this competition, as well as for um, our de university degree, we see that many of the documents or like research paper, formal research paper are in English. So um, if we want to actually extend the uh, knowledge of our citizen, many of them have to learn English. And I think in Cambodia, as well as many developing country, learning English can be seen as uh, something only the rich can have access to but I believe that if we um, normalize learning English in the society especially in um, I think embedded in the education system because it is one of the international language I think it will be um, the coverage will be better for kids especially in the rural areas like in Rotanakiri or something like that because um, joining events like this, international events like uh, this or competition like this, um, we use English to communicate with one another. And um, if they do not know English, if they do not have access to technology or learn how to use the te uh, technology in this digital era, I think that it will limit their opportunity to actually grow and um, connect with people in the region as well as on the international stage as well. You, you have mentioned like uh, they don't know how to use the technology in the digital era. So what, what is that? Uh, how, how do we use that? Um, I think using phones in this era is, is very common among people, right? Um, mm -hmm. Even if um, people at the provinces, they use their phone to, for example, take selfie, use Facebook, live stream, or like basically play games or anything like that. But using that would not actually help them improve in their academic or like critical thinking skills. I think they need um, knowledge in researching and actually wanting to learn more and mm -hmm. basically um, self-studying as well. Because if you have, for example, a device and you use it for like TikTok, dancing or anything like that, it may get you to be famous for some reason. But I, I think that if you want to improve yourself um, academically and basically join competition, join international events like this, I think that um, you should use it to basically find opportunity, find exchange programs, find um, competition where you can um, basically learn more about what is happening in the society and expose yourself more to the world. Uh, okay. Uh, I would, like yes. to, I would like to add, I'd like to add to what says. Mm -hmm. um, in terms of music, using internet productively, if they have access to it, the internet, using the internet productively would give you access to some of the smartest people on the planet. So you can gain access to the wisdom of Elon Musk and you can read audio books about um, people who have made a fortune, made millions, uh, even billions of dollars in wealth. So, um, if we spend too much time on um, things like TikTok, it's not that productive, but if we use that time to learn and listen to podcasts, um, to smart people, successful people, um, I'm, I'm trying to think of a few examples. For example, Joe Rogan, Joe Rogan podcast. Um, I also listen to Andrew Tate and a lot of audio book like The Richest Man in Babylon, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. So if we- Wow, use, a lot of smoke that I never know. <laughs> if, if, <laughs> if if we use our access to the internet productively, I think that we live in 
we, we are very lucky to live in this digital world where we can have access to anything. So if we use our time more productively, then I feel like young Cambodians in the future will be very capable, very um, passionate, and also very knowledgeable about the world and they can challenge the world head on. Okay, I, I do agree with all of you like about the barriers of language using about the uh, using mobile phone just for entertainment and also they don't know how to use their time productively. But for the people or the youth that live in, the, in Phnom Penh, that they have the access to the internet easily, they have many things they can study, uh, a good uh, school or university. So anything here, the challenge for them that they still cannot compete in internationally. Mm. Um, challenge for that, I think it would be, um, I think it would be, Maybe habits because yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm not sure because everyone's problem is different, right? We have a unique experience in life. But um, the thing that was very impactful in improving uh, myself is the learning of habit. So mm -hmm. I would suggest a book called Atomic Habit. So the things we do every day will lead to the future of our desire. So if we spend time, a lot of time watching TikTok, we will not learn much. So um, for us, to be good in the debate, we would have to spend a lot of time researching. So in my free time, I would listen to podcasts in the shower or maybe watch a documentary uh, during lunchtime. So using our time productively throughout the day and creating a good habit uh, is, is very important. And yes, I would say um, habits would really improve people's ability if they already have access to those technology and they're really then and they're still struggling okay so i mean to have a good habit i mean like do it now yes do it now <laughs> okay how about Sarirot, anything to add um i agree with what Ming said well but i want to add upon this on the fact that i think um that their challenges would be the fact that they don't dare to try mm -hmm. um so i've always I, i've always thought that um Cambodian youth like us um, have been raised to ex have high expectation for ourselves. We are raised to have high standards and to achieve, basically achieve our goals and never uh, make mistakes. So this is how our parents teach us. And this is what I think um, might affect the children um, self-esteem. So basically, if you see, for example, okay, an application for ASEAN Youth Debate, many of us would apply for it, but others would not because they believe mm -hmm. that, oh, maybe they're not good enough. So it's mm -hmm. such a waste of time to participate in that competition if at the end of the day, they will lose. Mm -hmm. So they do not see the importance of experience. They do not see the importance of making mistakes and they, they do not see the importance of trying something new and grabbing mm -hmm. the oppo opportunity. So I think that, um, if youth in Phnom Penh with access to technology and internet access and all that, if they could actually push themselves forward to actually grab on the opportunity given to them, I think they will they will have no challenges to actually um debate an international competition like us or mm -hmm. um, do something greater than this. Okay, cool, cool. Okay, I, would like, I, yeah, 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 I would please. like to add. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> What, what says was very impactful and, and a much wider perspective that I did not touch on. I only talk about habit and she talked about many other things, but I would like to expand on one thing that she said was um, uh, the logical fallacy that we learned because of our past, because of our ancestors experience, they went through war and most, most if not the majority the, um, of parents in Cambodia they did not gain access to a lot of um, the higher education. So, for example, my parent only went to um, grade eight or nine after they, after they had to go to Khmer Rouge. And then coming out, they had to survive from the war. So we grew up with a lot of logical fallacy as well, with a wrong belief that we have to correct. So those things take time. 
But first, the first step into correcting those logical fallacy, like believing that we have to be perfect, we cannot make mistakes, we have to win all the time. Um, we would first step we would have to accept that it's a logical fallacy and mm -hmm. it's wrong, and we should be more open to experiences. It's okay to fail because what's important is we learn and we grow. So yes, be open-minded and accept that there is some logical fallacy that we have to grow up and we have to correct. Okay, so in main line, the first is about the family condition that the way that they treat, the way that they uh, feed their children. So if mm -hmm. they care about the education, inspire their uh, children uh, to grow, uh, they will be great. But for the family that they don't have enough uh, con uh, warm condition enough, so that is a problem. So they should bond themselves as a leader, bond themselves as the one that will achieve something for our nation. So thank you for uh, Wei Ming and also Sri Rod for a nice discussion. So yeah, we have one question. Okay, from our fellow audience, it's about Faris. Faris, he, uh, yes, a young potential uh, juice as well as I know him. Yeah, so hello. He have the question like, how do you prepare yourselves or research before debate? So he asked me, uh, he asked you like, ask me, sorry. He asked you like, how do we research before the, uh, the debate? I mean database, case study, uh, example, analyze data, and uh, the, the document, where should we, we bring? So uh, could you tell us about the research methodology in the debate? Okay, okay. Um, I would tell you, I would start with uh, explaining my, my style of research because it's very um, weird. Some people say it's weird because um, I would um, start by getting interested in the topic first. For example, foreign direct investment. I would search foreign direct investment and watch some video about it. Or may, maybe, um, no, let, let me talk about FinTech. Um, our first topic in the first round was FinTech. And first, I, I, you, would, you would have to get curious about FinTech the is about FinTech a financial first. technology, right? Yes, financial yeah, yeah, technology. Okay. okay. Um, first, I would have to get curious about the topic first. So I watch a bunch of video, interesting video on YouTube about it. And then I would watch um, the IMF meeting or, or the president of, of the IMF discussion. So it's like a meeting where they um, put together some of the most important topic and they talk about it. And then I would work backward and write some script about it. And then I would go and find the data to support it later on. So first mm -hmm. I would have to understand the topic from a very um, higher up perspective first. So the director of the IMF and then take his perspective and then look into his perspective and find the facts to support his perspective. Okay, cool, cool, cool. How about Sri Rod? Um, so where do we research? At, when there is a topic, uh, so before I start doing research, I start finding the problem regarding that topic more. Because whenever there's a debate topic, there's supposed to be an issue or problems regarding it or circling around it. So I try to find the problem with it, like the problem associated to why is there this topic? Mm -hmm. And then I look into the stakeholders who may be doing the action in the topic or who are the victims or who are associated with the topic. So for example, fin like FinTech, um, you talk about the government for installation and stuff. And then you talk about FinTech company. You also think about the people who know how to use it, who are uh, tech literate and the people who are tech illiterate. So um, if you cover all the stakeholders and then you can see um, where your where the direction of that research should go. So firstly, you should focus on, for example, FinTech company, how many of them are in Asia? And then you can look at to, into the government. So why are government interested in installing or introducing FinTech into the society? And then you will look at the tech illiterate people because they will be the one marginalized from this whole process of in the introduction of FinTech in the first place. And then you build your case upon it. And um, another part about researching I want to mention is to use credible sources. So for example, um, the ASEAN organization, IMF, WHO, and all those 
a credible big organization around the world. So um, using data and statistics from um, those organizations, so for example, the UN and all, um, it will give you a more accurate data mm -hmm. than um, Wikipedia or those other random posts and websites. Okay, according to Enet Chit Kang, something like that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. I hope uh, you got the, the, the question, Faris. Uh, you got the answer. Sorry. Uh, yeah, I do agree with both of you. The first is uh, main, uh, when main uh, mentioned, like, we should curious about a topic. For example, uh, you, you, you raised about the fintech, financial technology. When you curious, like, what kind of finance uh, fintech? What is the problem? What is the challenge and what are the, the component and how it's really effective in terms of uh, use nowadays uh, using the finance or technology. And then we have to look at uh, the aspect as uh, the contact as uh, Sri Ron mentioned is about we talk, uh, we debate in the ASEAN stage. So we should not just only look at in our country, but in the ASEAN context. And also you have mentioned about the critical, uh, crit critical sources or reliable sources. We should not use from the just only Wikipedia, Wikipedia because uh, we debate uh, internationally uh, as a DB, uh, as ASEAN. So we should use the uh, 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 I forgot you mentioned, uh, I mean the like, uh, ADB, yeah, WHO, yeah, IMF, and also ASEAN in that as well. So uh, why we use those information because it because the topic is about the fintech, about the financial technology. So we should find which institute or international institute that work on the financial technology. Okay, thank you. So any more question? No, 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 no. Okay, uh, we don't have any more question. Uh, just only one question. Uh, thank you for joining us today, Wei Meng and also Zerai Rot. But before we end, I have one question. Like, if one of you will be represent our Cambodian in any international stage, what will you show? What will you do? Or what will you present? Oh, wow. That's a very <laughs> deep question. That's a very deep question. <laughs> You already have an experience, that, right? So if the next chance. Uh, can I answer first? Sure. Okay. Um, okay. So I have two things to show the world. Uh, firstly is my capability in the first place. So um, I'll try to actually um, learn a lot and be um, and, you know, uh, be academically strong uh, um, to actually show the world that, okay, um, there are actually um, capable Cambodian youth because uh, we see ourselves sometimes as inferior to other member states, like to the Singaporean citizens or the Malaysian or the Filipinos. Um, but I want to show the world that uh, we are also capable as, as Cambodian. And secondly, I want to show them our culture. So wherever we go, no matter which part of the world we are in, the, our culture will always be with us no matter what. We always identify ourselves as Cambodian, and therefore I want to spread the culture to the world. So in, in forms of language, our mother tongue, as well as um, our traditional clothes, games, dances, and uh, songs, music, and all that more. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. How about Wayne Main? Um, okay, that brought really touched on some of the most important thing. And so I would say the same as her, but I would like to add the third thing. So first is um, my personal ability, my ability to create impact in any endeavor that I choose to go into. So it's to show that Cambodian can do it. Cambodia have the ability to create ripples and impact and be really, um, be a really impactful stakeholder or participant in any endeavor that we choose to go into. For example, my endeavor is accounting. So maybe I would hope to create some ripples in that um, endeavor. And second is our culture. Oh, I'm sorry, the light went out, but I'll continue. <laughs> um, okay. um, 
Second is our culture. I real, I'm deeply inspired by our culture uh, from a young age because um, I would like to share a quote that Rod shared with me during the preparation. It's like, we stand on the shoulders of giants. And that gives me goosebumps every time I say it because our ancestors are giants. They have great ability to build great things like the, the Angkor Wat. And it's very fortunate that we are born to be their next generation and carry on their um, success. And the third thing is our beautiful nation. Um, with my experience in Singapore, they have their beach, but their beach is not that beautiful, but they just have good facility around it. They built good facilities around it. And it's, it, it's uh, uh, so in Cambodia, at Koh Rong, Koh Rong have, Koh Rong is one of the most beautiful island I've ever been to. And there yeah, are many other places. Because you are now in Koh <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Okay. Uh, there, there are also many other places like um, Siem Reap and uh, Phnom Gulen and then also um, Kirirom and Kosnak and many other places. We have a beautiful country with beautiful culture and we should cherish that. So that is what I will show to the world and maybe hopefully one day I would come back and I would, I would be able to build good facility around these great, beautiful sceneries that uh, Cambodia has as well. Yes. Okay, thank you. I mean, like we stand so you on the giant. Wow, that, that is, a, is a good quote. Yeah, uh, like the John F. Kennedy, as, he, as you know, we, uh, we should not ask for uh, what our country do for you, but ask what you have done for mm -hmm. our country. So again, thank you uh, for both of you for joining us today. It really amazing discussion. And I do believe it will be effective and uh, useful for our fellows audience. And thank you for joining us. And I do hope in the next future, we will meet again and share the next topic and the next topic. Go and uh, make accomplishment, build a network with other ASEAN member states. They are really potential. We should not just only compete in our nation, but should internationally or globally. Sure. <laughs> Yeah, thank you for joining us tonight. And uh, if we all have any mistake, please uh, uh, give us a, yeah. my idol, Ray Rod Ho. Okay, oh, you have an idol. I, I support that, <laughs> but they said you are idol. Yeah, you too, my idol. Okay, I am your idol. Okay, uh, thank you. And let's say uh, good night. Have a nice day, everyone. Thank you, Wong. Okay. Wait. Thank you, Wong. Wait, wait, please. I have okay. To I have to finish soon. Wait.